through the exposed facility using the Kibo's robotic arm. And I will be involved in that the robotic arm operation as well. And that's all, as you say, during STS-127. Yes. Is there work before 127 arrives in order to get Kibo on orbit ready to accept these uh, new components? Yes, STS-124 uh, crew members, uh, uh, Karen Nyberg and Aki Hoshide, they performed the checkout, uh, and also Greg Shametov and Sandy Magnus uh, uh, are uh, part of the uh, checkout uh, crew members of the Kibo's robotic arm. But uh, what I'll be doing uh, during my uh, Expedition 18 time is to have the final checkout of the Kibo's robotic arm by demonstrating the very similar trajectory of the motion of the arm during the STS-127. Those uh, trajectories are the uh, trajectories for the uh, transfer of the payloads to the exposed facility. And after that is completed, uh, we will be ready to use the, uh, the Kibo's robotic arm for the first time operationally. Kibo is Japan's first manned space facility. Uh, how are the people in Japan responding to the flight of the Japanese components and the Japanese astronauts to the space station and the start of operations in Kibo? Yeah, when uh, SS-123 and SS-124 missions deliver the first two components of the Kibo module to the ISS, uh, we had a very uh, big media coverage of those missions and uh, it created a uh, a very big uh, enthusiasm among the people in Japan in human space exploration. And uh, it's over 20 years since uh, Japan started to, to work on this uh, project, and I think taxpayers, they deserve to see, uh, see us get to the next level, which is the utilization of the International Space Station. Each time when a Japanese astronaut flies in space, the media coverage is very big, and uh, I hope my flight, uh, as a long-duration flight crew member, uh, will further motivate the people in Japan in the human sp space exploration. Well, let's talk about science. A lot of the science that is done on board the station is research into how people can live and work for long periods of time in a microgravity environment. Uh, tell me about some of those kinds of experiments that you'll be working on during expeditions 18 and 19. Okay, uh, one of the experiments that I'll be involved in uh, human physiology is the, uh, as a test subject, I'll be uh, participating in, uh, in an experiment uh, uh, using a bisphosphonet, uh, which is, uh, uh, on the ground, uh, we use the bisphosphonet as a medication, which is a countermeasure to osteoporosis. In space, uh, we have a very similar uh, phenomenon of losing bone density, which happens to both uh, men and women young and elder, and uh, as a test subject, I'll be uh, testing that the bisphosphonate the medication to see if that has any influence, uh, not only on the osteoporosis on the ground, but also for our bone loss uh, in microgravity. Mechanism is different, but uh, if that helps uh, to, to alleviate the bone density loss, that would be very important data for us to continue our flight to Mars, for example. And that's one example. And uh, for example, in fluid science, uh, I'll be involved in a variety of experiments, and one of the uh, examples is uh, ice crystal growth experiment, which is a JAXA experiment. And uh, in that uh, experiment, utilizing the uh, fluid uh, uh, test uh, rack in the JAM module, uh, the in uh, investigators will be checking the uh, ice crystal formation uh, in microgravity. And uh, that kind of information or the data will help us understand variety of phenomena uh, happening not only on the Earth, but also in the uh, different uh, planets uh, of the solar system. And also as an European Space Agency experiment, I'll be involved in a test or experiment called the GeoFlow, which simulates like a mini core of the Earth cores. Um, the Earth core, for example, the inner core is, uh, is solid and uh, made of iron and the uh, outer core is, uh, is liquid and it's uh, made of uh, uh, nickel iron. And the uh, outer core actually has a temperature uh, of between 5,000 to 6,000 Celsius, uh, 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 degrees Celsius. And because of this temperature gradation, it creates some sort of uh, motion of the uh, outer core liquid. And it is believed that the, uh, this motion of this uh, electromagnetic uh, substance uh, causes this earth uh, magnetism. So by having a simulated the earth core, inner and out core, in an experiment module, 
they can study the uh, the actual phenomenon or the what's happening in this uh, fluid uh, that is simulating the Earth core, and uh, that's one of the example examples of experiments that I'll be involved. In. All of these kinds different different scientific disciplines, research is going to be be able to be done inside Kibo. There's that many different facilities. Actually, uh, the GeoFlow is uh, in the Columbus module, and the uh, Ice Crystal experiment uh, is in the Kibo module. And for Kibo module's uh, experiment, um, I will also be part of the experiment called Dome Gene, which is, uh, is to study the uh, influence of microgravity in the uh, cell differentiation and uh, morphogenesis of a, a cultural cell of an amphibian. And uh, we have uh, a cyber rack uh, to uh, to conduct the experiment, and that will the experiment itself is going to go up on SS 119, and I'll be involved in that experiment uh, throughout the, the long duration flight. Kibo does have facilities to support experiments in a, in a, quite a range of disciplines. Right, uh, life science, uh, fluid dynamics, material processing, and uh, and there are more experiments uh, coming in. And uh, what I talked about is the uh, inside of the Kibo uh, module, the core module, JPM, and uh, after SCS-127, we will have experiments on the exposed facility, uh, which I will not be involved uh, during my flight, uh, but there are more uh, capabilities added on to the Kibo module. There's something else that I don't think you will be in involved in, but I want to ask you about it, because uh, 2009 also promises to see the first launch of the Japanese cargo vehicle, the HTV, to the International Space Station. Tell me about that spacecraft and about how it will contribute to space station operations. Yeah, HTV is also, uh, has also been in long uh, in the works uh, for the JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. And HTV, or H2 Transfer Vehicle, uh, is a logistic supply vehicle uh, to the International Space Station. And just to admit, so people understand, H2 is? Right. Yeah, H2 is a Japanese rocket uh, developed by uh, JAXA. And uh, we are currently uh, developing the, uh, the beefed up, the more powerful version, which is called H H2B. And that will carry the HTV to the International Space Station. And that will be launched from Tanegashima Space Center that is located in the southern part of Japan. And uh, it, after launch on the H H2B rocket, uh, it will perform automatic rendezvous to the International Space Station. And uh, once it's approached to the International Space Station's R bar, it, it goes up uh, gradually until uh, at a distance where uh, astronaut on board the space station can use the Canadam 2 to grapple uh, the HTV. And uh, HTV can carry not only the uh, supplies and experiments to the interior of the International Space Station, but also it can carry external items. Could be uh, bigger items like uh, batteries outside of the uh, space station. So uh, because of this logistic supply capability, uh, HTV will uh, play an important role, especially after the retirement of the space shuttle, because currently only the space shuttle can carry those external payloads like the batteries. Now, the HTV will carry those payloads inside it, but they will be deployed outside the station. Actually, HTV itself has uh, two uh, major sections. One is the uh, interior uh, uh, portion of the HTV, and also there's an exposed pallet as well. And the exposed pallet itself can carry, for example, uh, GEM, the Kibo module experiments, or the US OS batteries. So we need to use the Canada Arm 2 to take out the exposed pallet from the HTV vehicle and then either put it on the uh, uh, mobile base system uh, or to the Japanese uh, module's uh, exposed facility. And after that, we will either use the Japanese robotic arm or the Canada Arm and also special purpose Texas manipulator could be used to further deploy the uh, individual batteries to be uh, housed to the International Space Station. So the HTV is more flexible in the terms of the kinds of uh, cargo that it can carry than the shuttle or progress. That's right. So this uniqueness of the HTV is, I think, uh, the, the capability to carry the external payloads. Your mission is going to stretch from Expedition 18 into Expedition 19 at the time when uh, Gennady Padalka and Mike Barrett arrive in the Soyuz in March. Uh, how's it been for you to train with not only two station crews, but two shuttle crews? Yes, it's, uh, in my previous flights, I only worked with uh, one crew at a time, so, which is a very 